Hey guys, so this is just another video. Um, I'm gonna be mainly on doing a fitness sequential gearbox to one of these builds, escort builds. I'd start documenting some of the cool stuff that rocks up between, you know, the milling things that are turning up, the gearboxes, you know, all the components, the MoTeC and stuff. Um, like real, real high-end part. Thought I'd take you guys along a bit of a journey with this one. Um, so this is a Samsona sequential six-speed European gearbox. Um, like I said, it's gonna be going behind the Millington. I'll take you guys along and show you what's involved in making a custom cross member um, and obviously doing all the inside. This is a mechanical, it's not pneumatic shifter, so fabricating all the base for the sequential lever to go in. Uh, yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so the gearbox is up, it's bolted up with the adapter plate to the Millington bell housing. It's a, it's, a, it's a Millington part. Um, straight onto the Samsona gearbox. It's offered up. Uh, as you can see, this is a full custom sheet metal build front to back, um, including exhaust tunnels. So it's just two factory chassis rails running in the car. The rest of this is handmade. You know, none of this is factory parts. Uh, four link or six link rear end in it, rebates for the diff, rebated boot floor. Um, but yeah, back to the transmission, lift it up into position um, and this is obviously just a bit of steel temporary while they're onto the rails just to support the back of the box so we can start lasering things up, centralising the output shaft or where the tail shaft is going to run into the centre bearing, start lasering things up and um, working out our options, our clearances, not only how we're going to mount it but then thinking about serviceability of the transmission, how to make it easy to remove in and out. Um, last thing you want to be doing with something like this is resting a big, not fairly heavy box. Um, you just want to make it as easy as possible to remove in and out. Um, so yeah, just I'll do some more calculations and give you a bit more of an update shortly. Okay, so now we've got the laser all set up. I've dropped the front roller door, so hopefully it helps a bit more with the light, but yeah, We've got the true center line RL running front to back on the car with a few pickup points. And now we know that we've got our gearbox sitting in the true center line. Um, height can be played with still. Um, straight through the gut to that center shaft there. And the Samsona box is a, is a sort of drum round style box, um, but the back housing here is sort of oblong -y. It's sort of different it's not really round so it might look a bit off but always run off of this main shaft there um so now that's all set we can still alter our pitch a bit for clearances and stuff um but we also want to get that sort of sweet spot so next up is to start working out the location and best way to to mount this i'll cut out some mounting tabs or lugs from five mil steel so they're all mounted to the back there and then this will be you know the base of the cross member will go up like this and then miter it on either side to clear the exhaust in here so this is what i've come up with um showed you earlier the mounting tabs um so they've all been all welded off and made up the cross member all gusseted very happy with how it turned out still gaining access to all the plugs bolts, mounting, bracketry, etc. So that's nice. Um, nice and tight up against the floor. On this side, a bit of a scalloper rebate, obviously for the exhaust later on to run through with ample clearance. So that's cool. Um, like I say, clear cut off in position temporarily just now before I work out the mounting bolts. We'll go up through the floor on the inside, load spreading captive nut plates with little gussets up onto the tunnel. And then this will be a um, very solid bit of kit. So that's the gearbox cross member totally finished. Um, that's a bearing load of the gearbox there. Now the temporary brace has been removed. Um, two M10 bolts through the mounts on lock nuts. Then just two M10 8mm Allen keys up through the floor. You'll actually just see the panel from the other side. So I'll show you inside in a minute, but that's a reinforcing plate with the captive nuts on there. Um, and again, obviously same on this side. 
So this, yeah, like I said, gives you plenty of access to all the bangs and drains, etc. Right, I'll drop it down and show the inside. And from the inside, that's um, three mil plate with a captive, two captive nuts, and then two mil folded up gusset plate, bridging onto the exhaust tunnel there, just to give that extra support. And then same on the other side. So now that we've got the transmission in its final position, um, next stage, this is the mechanical sequential lever and then lock out for neutral reverse, which runs on a cable. Um, they run through an actuator rod, link rod, to the top of the transmission on a couple of rolls joints, front and back. There's the other one there. Um, so I've got to make up a base plate, a riser. I know the threshold for the comf uh, customer's comfort position for where he wants the lever. Um, important to remember that the link rod or actuator rod has got to be parallel from the shifter to the top of the transmission so I need to make up a riser mount strong enough to withstand the counter lever of knocking up and down the gears and then a, a surround trim also to clear the link rod so yeah let's get into it. So that's the Samsona sequential gear lever mechanical lever fit off in its final position mounted onto a solid base plate made out of 3mm steel uh, as you can imagine during the competition and stages this will take a fair bit of knocking up and down the box so that has to be solid um, selecting gears now perfect the link rod I talked about earlier on that's all in dock to length and everything I touched on earlier um, it's got to be you know bang on level so that's happy with that um, next up we'll be making up the actual surrounder capping plate for the this area here to dress it all off and to cover everything up it'll just be made from one mil sheet steel so we'll get into that next so that's the gear lever surround base plate um, fabricated up and fit it off so this is purely to dress off the area and to keep out dust and dirt and debris from entering the, the cabin. On this flange here all the way around, there will be a, a neoprene tape, like a gasket, um, to keep all that stuff out. And obviously we'll keep, uh, protect the paint on the mating faces. Underneath there's a slot or an eccentric hole for the actuator rod or the link rod for the, for the main shaft. Um, you would have noticed before it had a big slot on it. That's so that once these four bolts are removed, the actual gear lever can be lifted up. It allows the rigid actuator rod to hinge up to take the one bolt out of the lever itself. That'll come straight off. And then the capping plate will come off also. And it means you're not having to wrestle around underneath the car to remove the lever. And on this slot or the eccentric hole here, there will be a, like a, a gator, a rubber gator boot over that. That'll keep 99% of the dirt out and then the neoprene gasket around here will um, just keep everything sealed up. So yeah, pretty happy how with how all that went. So I've just fabricated or folded up some linking gusset plates. They'll sit on the inside of the floor pan here to link up the inner sill to the tunnels. You'll see the panel from the stitch welding on the underside for where the factory chassis rails have been welded onto this floor pan. For something that's super lightweight, this adds heaps of strength back into the car, structurally wise. Like I say, inner sill to tunnels and on both sides. Something I like to do also is any concealed areas, um, metal on metal, weld through primer. And then this will get welded off in its final position here linking up and creating some real structural strength back into the floor pan. So that's a wrap on this install video with the 6-speed Samsona Sequential up against the 2.5 Millington and all the custom cross member and mounting works etc. Um, I touched on it previously from front to back on this car is a full custom sheet metal build so no factory reference points or mounting it's all done from scratch definitely a bit of work involved in it very happy with how it all turned out the car's now off the hoist and 
back on its dolly. For now, I'm jumping on to some other work um, in the shop. So much happening at the minute at the workshop, um, in and out, some super cool stuff going on. So moving forward, I'll document loads of different style of work, like I say, in and out to the shop, whether it be rallies we'll go to, dyno tuning, I'll take you out and about, show you some cool stuff. Um, but for now, thanks for watching, and we'll do another video soon. Cheers.